Hello, I'm Kelly Rudin and I teach world history at Germantown's campus. I was born in 1956, so I was three years old when the Cuban Revolution happened. And so most of my life has been shaped by the um, U.S. relationship with Cuba and the embargo and the Cuban Missile Crisis and things like that. I got a chance to go because Montgomery College was doing the study abroad program. This was really a great opportunity. So since I was three years old, I have studied a lot of history and have found out that the relationship between Cuba and the United States and Cuba and the West and Cuba and the whole world is actually a story that most people don't understand. So since it's such a huge story, I want to focus on something that um, is near and dear to most of our hearts, and that is sugar. So sugar cane was originally grown in New Guinea, on the island of Guinea, and the Indian people, as in the people in India, learned how to crystallize it in about 500 of the common era. Well, that was a very important experience because before people had to suck on sugar cane and chew on it, and even though it was so much sweeter and more wonderful than honey, it was hard to transport. And when the Indians learned how to crystallize it and could transport it and spread it around the world, People fell in love with it. People became addicted to it. Sugar cane had made its way up through the Muslim world, where they did wonderful, wonderful things with marzipan and um, wonderful sugar, but the thing that they really valued it for was its medicinal properties, which you can understand. So in 1492, when Christopher Columbus sailed across the Atlantic to go to where he always was convinced that he had gone to India, he took sugarcane with him from the Canary Islands to the islands of the Caribbean. And at that point, the history of the world would change because sugarcane, raising sugarcane, cutting sugarcane, boiling sugarcane, processing sugar cane to get that dark color out and make it this white gold is a brutal, horrendous process. And when you put a worker in a sugar cane field to cut the sugar cane, or you put them at those boiling vats to boil it down, that is a brutal process. And so a lot of evidence points to the fact that people in Europe could not put people who looked like themselves into that brutal situation. And so you do it to Native Americans, but most especially you do it to Africans, who they had already started working their sugar plantations on the islands off of Africa. And so the history was set for the Caribbean and for much of South America and North America because Africans were brought over to work in that horrendously, horrendously brutal, brutal environment of the sugarcane fields. Cuba specifically will be a place where not only do you have sugarcane grown by the Spaniards, by the French, but the United States also wanted Cuba. They wanted Cuba because they wanted that sugar because it's not just for sugar cookies and marzipan, it also, as you know, makes rum. And so one of the really, really ironic things about the history of the United States is that more slaves, African slaves were brought into the U.S. after 1776 than before 1776. And how much the desire for sugar drove everything that was happening in the U.S. economy. So fast forward to 1898, the United States wanted to hold on to its sugar interests. And so when the Spaniards leave, the U.S. move in as colonizers. And we used Cuban sugar cane. And the Cuban sugar would um, feed us and give us chocolate and give us rum and give us all sorts of things. 
and the interest in Cuba sugar has remained a staple in U.S. policy.